And what's going on, guys? And welcome to the Benches Cleared Podcast, where we cover the best rivalry in all of sports. I am Jesse Gutierrez. I represent the side of the San Francisco Giants, who technically went 2-3 and three last week. But as you can see, we're recording during the Giants game. They're winning. It's ready 3-0. I'm calling it a win at 3-3. Three and three. I'm Tyler Coe, representing the side of the Los Angeles Dodgers, and I live in the real world, unlike Jesse. Um, so I wouldn't call a game that early, but the Dodgers did go 4-2 and two last week. Should have been 5-1. and one. We had a little mishap with the Giants, um, but that should have been a sweep. Still, the well, only technically, I didn't count major, that game. If you want to count that game, we're already 3-3. Still the in Major League Baseball that has yet to lose a series. And best record in baseball, you know. All those good things. And as you could tell, um, Tyler's rich ass is coming to you live from vacation uh, and, and sleeping on a bunk that is above his head, not even touching the ground, which I would be scared that it would fall. Uh, and that's not a poke at your weight. That's just saying anybody. Look at that. This is that podcast money. <laughs> Keep watching. Ben, just clear. We're just, we're, just, we're just making racks, baby. Racks on racks on yeah. fucking racks. Um. Racks and, on racks on racks. And to speak on uh, – actually, this has nothing to do with racks on racks on racks. We're going to talk about uh, the games that were postponed. The game two between the Dodgers and Giants were postponed due to um, – they wanted a day of reflecting. And I posted out, honestly, when, when they when they stopped for a day, I was kind of like, what are we doing here? Uh, like, if we really want to make a statement and, and demand things to change, they should just all stop. Obviously, I'm probably one of the last people who would want it to stop, but – just make it all stop until something happens. But it was more of a reflection um, and to have the conversation be on the issues at hand and to not be on baseball, which I think is really important and which is really great. And hopefully those discussions and, and you know, in and, and those house and households that need to have discussions uh, happened. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, you know, I had tweeted out that sports, you know, are, are a luxury in our society and, you know, it's frustrating. I, I think the the having the day off to have the conversations, that's all well and good. But really, I mean, for things to spur change, you know, like I was really thinking the NBA was going to go on strike. Yeah. And I really think that's something big enough that's going to make people stop and realize and be like, wow, this is, this is a big fucking deal. Which is sad. And people are you mad. Know, because... And they're going to be like, yeah, why are they so mad? And then they do their own research and, you know, they just kind of come to that conclusion. But I don't know. We don't have the answers. That's for that's for damn sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of different opinions. I mean, we're not really going to get into it. But, I mean, I think that, you know, us over here are on the same page and things need to change. And, you know, hopefully stuff, you know, can work itself out and, and real change can be made in today's society. And it's sad that, you know – Sports are any factor in being a distraction when it comes to real serious issues that need to be handled. But back to the matter, it, it, it is. You know, I saw a lot of people bitching, like, oh, sports, like, why, who the hell do they think they are? And it's, sports are one of the biggest things in America. And, you know, if you take something away that people love, it's going to, yeah. it's going to bring, bring that spotlight to what everyone's protesting why they're stopping the game. So I totally understand mm. it. It makes total sense. So yeah. those people are fucking idiots. Hey, you got to put on timeout every once in a while. Um, and speaking of, uh, actually, that's not speaking of any, I'm, that's just my go-to transition and it hasn't yeah. worked twice. Maybe I should get a different transition, but we're going to talk about the trade deadline. Trade deadline was on Monday and we're going to have a whole section for the Giants uh, side. So um, here it is, whole 10-minute section, Giants breakdown and exactly what happened. And it is nothing. Back to you, Tyler. Yeah, I had this uh, huge thing worked out with whiteboards and strings and photos. <laughs> and uh, I don't have to use it now. Uh, yeah, it's a stay in pat. I mean – yeah. yeah, I mean, you you had you had actually something real, but for us it was just staying pat. And you know, I think that they can. Uh, Alex Dickerson went deep twice. It's the second time he went deep today, 
opposite side. This one was Oppo Taco. Dick, 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 dick. Dick, and that's why we didn't need anybody. I tweeted before this game, actually, that Belt was going to cool off and Dick is going to get super hot, and Dick is hot. Um, so don't touch the Dick, because the Dick is hot. Staying Pat, we're going for uh, that 7-8 seed. We're coming. Burn it down. Saddle up, boys. We're burning it down. Let's go. Tyler, talk about chicken chip. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think the Ross Stripling trade was great. It's Something that's probably not going to, you know, prove whether we won or lost for a couple years. But we ended up getting a pretty highly touted prospect who can throw hard, big guy. Maybe another so we'll one, see. too. And, and the, best, the best part of it for me is now it frees up a spot in the rotation for Tony Gonsolin. Yeah. Now our rotation is set. And... Then we got news say that Alex Wood was being activated off the IL, and I was like, God damn it, it's about to happen. But they um, – Andrew Friedman Dave Roberts already said that Alex Wood's going to be a bullpen arm for the rest of the year. So now you're looking at the rotation of, you know, once Bueller comes back, Kershaw, Bueller, Urias, Gonsolin, and May, and that's where we're going with for the rest of the year, and I think that's the right way to go about it. So – yeah, honestly, I mean, I if, love Tony Gonsolin. If you would have got Mike Clevenger, yeah, that's an upgrade. Uh, if you would have got Josh Hader, that's an upgrade. I mean, anyone can use that dude. But you know, and, and to go on the polls, um, you, you know, like we were talking, there a lot of Dodgers fans. We don't need anything. We don't need anything. Like, yeah, you don't need Lance Lynn. Technically, you don't need Mike Clevenger, but everyone can use a fucking Josh Hader. I mean, that's a, a locked yeah. in bullpen arm like that. Like, you know, but. Why give up anything for Lance Lynn when you got guys like May and Gonsolin in the bullpen? I mean, honestly, yeah. like Christopher Russo, Mad Dog, remember he was getting like, oh, they should have traded for a pitcher. They don't have anybody. But it's like, come on, let's be real. I mean, top <clears throat> prospects who are killing it, chill. Yeah. Well, even for, even for Clev. Yeah, for, for Clev, and everybody knows no one likes Mike Clevenger as much as I do. And now I'm going to have to not because he is an NL West opponent. Mm -hmm. But – Yep. You Welcome know, for to my someone life. like Clev, but for someone like Clev, it would have probably taken someone like Dustin May or Tony Gonsolin, and maybe someone like a Caver Ruiz, and we don't need that. If we could have fleeced them and just gave them, you know, a bunch of low-level prospects, sure, we could totally use Clevenger. But we have the pieces mm -hmm. here in front of us where San Diego doesn't. I mean, they do yeah. now after they traded for a whole goddamn new team, but. You know, I, I'm happy we didn't get Clev because I know what it would have cost to get him. Yeah. Even way too much. I just hate the, the, the Padres fans talking about – I mean, sorry, not Padres fans, sorry. The Indian fans who were like when, when I would see these fake mock trade proposals and they're like Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, Kiebert Ruiz – and Corey Seager for Lindor and uh, throw Mookie and, 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 and Clevenger. Yeah, and, and they were like, that's still not enough. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, calm down. Like, Clevenger, yeah, he's really good. Lindor's really good. But Lindor only has this year left on his – no, I think he has one more year left after this. He has this. next year. Yeah. yeah, and then, I don't know. Guys, calm down, Indians fans. You're, you're pulling the gas too much. Uh, you guys ended up not even getting one top 100 prospect for Clevenger. So, push on the brakes. Padres still left their top six prospects in their system. They have a hall of, of mid-level guys that, that, that could be contributors, but come on, dude. He, he wasn't obviously that valuable if he didn't even get one 100, top 100 guy. Yeah, I think the Indians got a little bit worse and the Padres got much better. So, yeah, we'll see who wins that, but, I mean, it, it looks like it's going to be the Padres for sure. But – I mean, I, I think it's something that we talked about at the beginning of the season. I didn't think anyone was going to move at the trade deadline. I really yeah. didn't think there was going to be any moves. And yesterday and, you know, Saturday. Well, the Padres Sunday, really made really and, good moves. So, But, I mean, but it felt like a real trade deadline. Mm. Like, I was not expecting it at all. I, I'm getting notifications. This guy's going there. Like, there were so many rumors swirling around. Like, it was fun. Because yeah. I wasn't love trade deadline time. It wasn't a trade deadline normally, but it wasn't what we were expecting. It was more than what we were expecting. 
um, I, yeah. th- I think is very fair to say. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't as much for a market for rentals, obviously, with only mm-hmm. 25 games left in the season. But, no, it was fun, and it was definitely more than I thought it was going to be. All right, guys, now we're going to get into it with our guest of the week. All right, please help me welcome a friend of the podcast, 2019 third round pick by the Los Angeles Dodgers and current right hand pitching prospect, Ryan Pepio. How's it going, Ryan? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you yeah, for, coming for coming on. on man. I know I really appreciate it. I know you're pretty busy. Um, you're at the alternate training site at USC. What has that I feel like we as fans haven't really gotten a an insight as to what that looks like as far as the alternate training site and with it being a new thing starting this year. Is it more like spring training or is it, it just seems like it, it it's like spring training, but I, I don't know. I have no idea. So if you wouldn't yeah. mind shedding some light on it. No, it, it kind of is like spring training. When we first got there and we kind of had our like initial meeting, they're like, okay, we don't want to make it seem like spring training, but it probably will feel like it just because we're going to the field the same place every day. We're playing against the same guys every day. So we try to incorporate some fun aspects to to baseball to make it seem like it's not spring training. But mm-hmm. when you only have a, a certain amount of group of guys at, at the field every day, there it kind of feels like it. But, I mean, we have a great time. We got a great group of guys, great group of coaches um, that bring good energy every day. So it, it makes it a lot more fun um, and isn't like a drag like you'd think of spring training every day for however many months it would be. Is it uh, – are people trying to break in and watch you guys practice or – No, USC is pretty – they have a pretty locked down. They, you have to, like, have, like, a passcode to, like, through an, a USC app to get in. Um, they have, like, two different checkpoints. So you get a checkpoint when you go in. And they closed off most of the entrances to the campus. And then once you've already gone through one checkpoint, you got to go through another. Um, luckily, we go through a bus from the hotel. So we, didn't, we just Did you- go right through them. You kind of just gave us a map on how to break in, though. Like, you like you didn't tell us yeah. how to break in, but you were like, you, if you want to break I was in. Say, are you writing this down, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've, I have you got to hack into to USC's uh, computers. I got to gotta make laminates. Okay. Yeah, we got yeah. it. We got it. I mean, I mean, I have seen a couple. There's been a few people that, like, will stand outside the field, um, like, outside the fence. And when we're taking BP and you see some people just snagging some baseballs because they're flying out of the place. Yeah. Um, but – that's about Not it. Not when you're pitching, seen... though. Uh, no. Really? That's a thing? No. You can do that? Dude, uh, I, I, don't I, know. I don't know how the people hot, got there. And it's been killing me not to see some BP this year. It's been Damn. it's been fun to watch some BP. It's been fun to watch some BP. It's, I mean, pitching with, like, the big league baseballs and, like, ever, seeing everybody hit those, like, up close and personal, yeah, they go, they go a long ways. <laughs> so are you guys doing, like, inter-squad games – every day or is it just kind of inner squad games sometimes and then just kind of going through your normal routines that you would have between starts as far as throwing yeah. bullpens and things like that yeah it's kind of a a mixture because we have a certain amount of starters they try to break only have like two starters per day so that hitters can see more more pitching more days so some days the scrimmage maybe two innings um some days like could be like eight or nine, um, depends on um, who needs to throw and who needs it's whose turn to get their start, who's built up so much, like which relievers need to throw each day. And then some days we don't have a scrimmage at all and they're mm-hmm. easier day. So just like you said, it just depends on the day and where everyone's like rotation uh, lines up. I'm curious, have, they, have they talked to you at all about What's going to happen next year? Because I know you've, you've only played in, in, um, in, in low A. Is it going to kind of – have they talked to you about, like, where you're going to progress? Like, is it going to be, like, you know, for, for A advanced? Or are they going to kind of use this as a year of, like, well, you're in the training camp, so that's basically your, your high, so we're going to bump you up to double A next year? I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. They haven't really said anything to me about it. Um, mm. I mean, we all speculate as much as we can, but – there, nobody yeah. gets to play or nobody had a full season this year. So I'm lucky enough to be able to be out here and working with our staff and um, get some sort of games. I guess what's, what's like the, the thing that you're mainly looking forward to uh, next year, getting back into, you know, the regular minor league baseball. 
probably just being around the guys every day, you know, going, going to the park. It's been really nice to be back in like the routine of going to the ballpark every day, but it'll be mm. nice to, to, I think probably the best part will be like being able to suit up in a uniform with our guys and play against somebody other than ourselves. Cause we mm. didn't get to do that in spring training. It was like, yeah. day, day spring training got canceled. Uh, I think it was like the first day we were supposed to play like open competition against like other teams. So it was really? play against play against yourselves, the scrimmaging, and then all right, time to go home, and then back to we're playing against <laughs> each other again. Yeah, I would imagine, you know, you miss the the competitiveness of playing a different opponent. What is the competitiveness like during inter squad games? Because we got to see some Dodger inter squad games before the season opened up, mm-hmm. and it mostly kind of looked like guys having fun. But, I mean, do these games, do they ever get, like, you know, people really want that W? Um, a, a kind of a combination. Um, it's kind of – you just kind of give yourself as much intensity as, as you can. Um, they're definitely more lighthearted, I guess. So, we definitely have a little more fun yeah. on the field. You talk a little smack to the guys in, in the box or they get a hit off you. You talk a little smack while they're on first or second base or – maybe one of the times that they're rounding the bag against you. But, I mean, it, they're definitely, um, is, I would say, a competitive aspect that is a little bit lacking since we're not playing true games where, like, it actually, like, matters win-loss column. Um, but, I mean, everyone here is professional, so they're trying to make use it as a development piece. So trying to um, make it as competitive as possible. And I think um, we've, we've definitely been able to nail that on the head. Who's the uh, best trash talker and the worst trash talker? Um, I would probably say I'm one of the worst trash talkers. <laughs> I, I don't talk a lot of smack. <laughs> if I do, if I start talking trash, I, it just doesn't end well for me. Um, good trash talker? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, everyone's got – some people are pretty good and then – some people aren't, but I would say, honestly, some of the Latin guys are pretty good because they can talk smack in Spanish, and I have no idea what they're saying. They say <laughs> so, that's, like, that's a nice they, touch. They could be telling me, like, a compliment, but then they say it, and I have no idea. It's a compliment. I, so, you, know, you just kind of have to assume the worst sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, it's kind that's of funny. next level mind games right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know a couple of those words, but I, they said it so fast, and I have no idea, like, I'm I'm trying to process, and they're like four sentences down. I'm like, okay, can you slow down? Can I write that out on a piece of paper? Because <laughs> I know baseball is not that like trash talking, right? And I've like, in my no. head, I have this like this picture of like you know like I'm not sure if you're a big UFC guy or not, but like I feel like Conor McGregor is just so good at trash talking, and then mm-hmm. when he gets in front of someone who doesn't know how to talk trash, it's just it just makes it that much more funny. Like when he says something <laughs> so cunning and so great, and someone's like, yeah, well you're gonna get beat like hard and I was I was looking for one of those you know oh, no we haven't had any of those uh any of those moments yet um it's more like a kind of light trash talk just kind of have a little fun I mean we've been playing against each other for a couple like a month or two months now and you know the days have started to run together yeah um so it's we just like to go out there and have fun however the fun comes in the day like someone makes a diving play like we got some of the coaches going out there playing positions because we don't have enough guys to field all the positions. So one of the coaches makes an awesome play. Like it, it makes it pretty fun. Yeah. Well, I'm available if, you know, uh, <laughs> Tyler's on vacation, but uh, yeah, if you Tyler's guys need a, uh, yeah. So Tyler can't home come tomorrow. Doesn't matter. You're home. not invited anymore. <laughs> I got, I got my, I got my shit laminated already. My wife's got a cricket and making one up. So I'll, I'll be there. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. We'll see who actually gets out there because I honestly am thinking about taking a drive down just to see what the BP situation looks like. Cause I would love to catch. I love going to BP. I love ball hawking. Are, are they, I mean, are they letting you go down? Oh no, I wish. I wish. <laughs> I feel like now's the time. Like, I know. Why not? I know. I mean, with the DH rule this year, like I don't know if it's gonna stick next year or not. Yeah. But with it with it in play this year, that they're, they're like, nah, you don't get to hit. I mean, I was really looking forward to it, but it's all right. Are Are you looking like let's say the DH so comes back? Or do you, you want the DH to come back? I guess the question. 
Um, I mean, sorry, the 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 DH to go away in the National League. I, I fucked up that the the asking of that. I'm I would say kind of indifferent. It doesn't matter to me either way. If mm-hmm. if it uh, goes away, like awesome, I get to swing the bat. But then at the same time, if it stays, like awesome, I don't have to hit against some of these nasty dudes and not just stand <laughs> yeah. in there when somebody's throwing 100 miles an hour at me. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, I haven't hit since high school. The hardest I faced in high school was like like 93 or something like that. Like. Somebody's out there with 100 miles an hour and 20 inches of movement. Like, I stand no chance. Yeah, they're not setting you yeah, up first to at bat. Just nope. step into the box uh, against Max Scherzer or someone. I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Maybe at that time you'd yeah. want the DH roll. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'll be like. No one wants uh, to do can we, that. Can we get? Can we get the no DH rule again, that. please? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I give up. Um. So <clears throat> we, you know, everyone that we have on. I'm always very interested in their draft story. And I know, mm-hmm. you know, you getting drafted in the third round. I would imagine you knew you were going to get drafted. But when did that talk kind of come up in your college career? Like, when did you know that you were going to get drafted and drafted in a pretty high spot? Um, I would say I, I kind of started to have a feeling that I was going to get drafted um, the summer going into my junior year when I was playing in the Cape Cod League. Um, mm. I went out there and was, I was hopeful that I was going to, and like, it was always a dream of mine to, to play in the Cape Cod League to set myself up to hopefully get drafted and play professionally. And then mm. I, um, kind of like struggled to start. So then I was kind of like down, I was like, okay, maybe this isn't going to happen. But then I like, picked it up and like started to figure things out. And then after having a really good summer, like more, uh, scouts started like reaching out to me. Like I had the fall season at, at school at Butler and, like scouts were coming to our fall scrimmages and I had never seen anything like that before. I had started having meetings with different organizations, scouting departments. Um, I, I never like pictured third round um, until like going up a couple, probably a couple months before, like once the season started um, in that spring, um, it just kind of kept uh, climbing a little bit and um, just worked out um, going, mm-hmm. going into the draft. I kind of thought like, Okay, maybe I was hearing anywhere from like rounds two to four. Um, so watch the day one draft didn't happen. Um, it's all right. And then I think it landed in the best spot I possibly could have. So in, in those meetings, right, because it's not like like college where like, you know, when you're getting recruited to college, I guess, you know, you have the choice of where to go. It's wherever you kind of get drafted. Did they try to like woo you at all? Um, Any types of gifts? Bit. Nothing. No, no gifts. I didn't get any money or anything. Like, uh, I wish I've been cool. Get treated like a high level recruit, maybe. But um, <laughs> um, no, it was more like kind of see what their organ, like explain what their organization had to offer. Like, it was okay. kind of like a introductory meeting. So they kind of want to see like my personality, like how I am, like sitting in talking to somebody. Um, Mm-hmm. More, rather than see how you are off the field is kind of what yeah. more or less what it was kind of like an interview mm-hmm. I guess if you want to call it that yeah because I mean they you still have to choose to sign with them ultimately but I yeah. mean at the same time you can't choose where to go some if you know the Tigers draft you and you don't want to play in the cold it's kind of like oh well tough shit you kind of got drafted and, unless you don't sign yeah I mean I, I played in the cold so I'm all right like I would have been fine yeah. with that yeah I played it's not fun it's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you guys do it. Like, when we had Zach McKinstry on, I was telling him how I saw that the Central Michigan baseball field, people used to play hockey on it during the winter mm-hmm. outside. And I was, yeah. you know, us being from Southern California, I can't even fathom that. No. Like, I don't no. understand snow. I don't, I don't when get it gets it. 60, when it gets like 60, we're freezing. We need, we need jackets. Yeah, I was walking outside in downtown Los Angeles and like, November when I was working out here in the off season and I walked outside, um, like get a coffee in the morning and I was outside in a t-shirt and shorts and it was like 60 degrees. And the person next to me when I was walking down the street says, Oh man, it's a cold one today. And he's over here in a hoodie and a bean. I'm, I'm, yeah. looking, I'm looking at myself. I'm wearing flip flops. I got shorts and a t-shirt. I'm like, I'm from Indianapolis, man. If, if like, if I was back home right now, I'd be 30 degrees, maybe at the max and probably like a couple inches of snow on the ground. Like this yeah, is, you warm. guys are bred different. We yep. couldn't handle that. 
What's since now you're in Southern California, what's uh, the best food that you've gotten into being down here? Ooh, um, I definitely do like seafood, and then like okay. sushi is way better out here than it is in the Midwest. Definitely more mm-hmm. on the fresh side. So, um, I don't know. I, I would like to say I'm a foodie, but they the we have chefs cooking for us, so I haven't had to really uh, go get food or order anything. Yeah. That would make sense. I mean, they don't want you eating the shitty uh, – I mean, it's good, but, I mean, the shitty uh, nutritious-wise L.A. food they yeah. got out there. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Are you guys kind of following the the direction of the big league club where it's, you know, you go do whatever you're doing at the practice field at USC, and then it's back to your hotel room, and that's a wrap on the day? Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty much that. Um, they're, like, limit your time outside, like, um, if you have to go to the grocery store to like go grab some snacks or you want to go grab something, um, some dinner or something like that, don't sit at a restaurant, just order it pre order it, pick it up order takeout or something like that. They're, they really want to limit our exposure to like anybody else. Um, just cause we don't know everyone else's situation and we don't want to be that one person that right. happens to get it. And then we have a big leaguer that's down rehabbing or something like that, uh, for the day. And then we, talk to them and then somehow give it to them and then they go and that's how your outbreak happens and then yeah. that's how so, we, so you don't yeah, want to be just the Houston kinda, Astros basically yeah Ruin well it I think everyone. it was yeah Astros so, yeah, did I thought it was the Marlins and uh yeah, St. Louis no the Astros have te- had to shut down their alternate site twice oh really? I guess, yeah because Texas that. was a hotbed yeah. for a bit so Okay, that would make sense. I didn't know that. I just yeah. thought we were talking like the Marlins had that outbreak of like mm-hmm. 20 guys get it. I mean, yeah, any, no, re- that... any reason to hate the Astros more, though? I mean, we're all for it. Yeah, well. That's what we stand by here. <laughs> we'll scream it from the rooftops. That's not a problem. And I'm sure this comes up all the time, so I'm going to preface it in a way. How sick are you or were you of people asking you, what is it like to come from a basketball school? Um, I've heard that a lot. And most of the time people didn't even know we had a baseball team at my school. Um, but it, it was, I mean, I, I grew up like 20 minutes from Butler. So like I'd gone to Butler basketball camps growing up or like gone to games mm-hmm. growing up. So I was like familiar with it. And then like just happened to work out that I would go, I went there. And, but yeah, every time I go to summer ball or like, meet somebody new like they'd be like oh they're like where do you go to school I'm like butler and they're like oh i know butler i'm like oh what do you do and they're like yeah you guys went to like two national titles in a row in basketball like in 2010 i was like yeah yeah exactly but we do have a baseball team too uh, <laughs> i'm here as other, well uh we got a couple <laughs> other sports you know but yeah but yeah it was it was it was uh I've heard that one before, and it doesn't bother me. It, it's I kind of find it funny. Ryan, I, I looked and I saw that um, you were in those interleague games that were on TV, and um, you know, I just have to ask, like, what's it like to like when you when you struck out Bellinger? How, how did you feel? Very relieved. Um, <laughs> I was. <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was a very surreal experience to get to pitch there, and like I worked out there in the off season, so I'd like thrown on the field, like done some bullpens on the game mound, but like being there and like throwing in a game and getting the chance to pitch to Mookie and um, Jock Peterson and Bellinger and those guys, it, it was really, really cool. And, and to do um, as well as I did, it was just icing on, on the cake. Did you ask to keep the ball or you're like, can I just? No, no. I, I was trying to <laughs> keep like a low, low profile. I didn't want to, like you've been there before. It. Yeah. I kind of try to do that. I try to act professional. Uh-huh. But, I mean, but did you, you come home, back to like the hotel like, room and just like kind of start dancing or <laughs> have a nice walk? No, walk back I'm, a, to your room? I'm a terrible, terrible dancer. So no dancing for me, but it was kind of like in the outside, I tried to show like no emotions but on the inside. I was like a little kid going, going crazy. Terrible That's dancer. Crazy. So like at weddings, do you just still go crazy and say, fuck it, I'm going to look stupid inside a wedding or well, uh, I haven't been to a wedding in a while. I got one coming up, so uh, I guess we'll see. Um, maybe I'll I'll attempt. You know, I'll m- maybe make some dancers yeah, out there. there. At know, least do the cha cha slide. I might have to. I I mean, I guess a wedding's for making a fool out of yourselves anyway. Like when you're you're friends with the groom. So uh, yeah, 
So I, I think as long as I'm there with one of my other buddies that, and we both make a fool of ourselves, like I'm all about it. Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the ticket. You need, you need someone else to advert the attention. Yes. Mm. You know, so they're yes. like, both of these guys look like jackasses as opposed to there's a jackass <laughs> over there. <laughs> yes. Cause then there's like a 50, 50 shot. They don't remember m- me being a jackass. They just remember the other guy. Exactly. So, you know, right. You just can't, you just can't push like, that, that line. The guy that struck out. Yeah. Isn't that the guy that struck out Cody Bellinger? And then you're going to be like, fuck. Yeah, that was and You're going to be over there doing the robot and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, like, that's not the guy. That can't be the guy. You just can't go overboard. Like, for instance, my, my sister got a little tipsy at my wedding and actually took my cousin and broke our table. Like, fell through it, oh. like WWF style. So you just got to toe the line. All right, all right. I mean, maybe – Maybe she belongs at like a Buffalo Bills tailgate or something like that, you know? They're That's all true. Break, yeah, there you go. Tables. <laughs> one can only hope. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> What's like the one thing that you're uh, – like you'd be in that like hobby-wise outside of baseball and what you would be doing career-wise if you weren't playing baseball? Um, career-wise, I was on tra- – I was going to do something like commercial real estate. Um, oh, Okay. So I was a finance and marketing double major in school. So I was going to do something real estate wise. Um, hobby outside um, with baseball. Uh, been picking up golf a lot lately. Um, mm. Since I've been in the warm weather, like I can play golf year round. Like usually back home in Indiana, like we play golf maybe five months out of the year. So I'm not here I uh-huh. play every day if I wanted to. So um, I'm not great, um, but you know, maybe I'll get there. So I would say golf outside of baseball, hobby-wise. Do you play with, like, people who take it too seriously? Um, sometimes. And then I usually don't play with them again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get I get upset when, like, you, you go with something. Because the thing is, if I hit a shot and it goes over to – because I, I play in this the cheapest course in my in my town, and right next to it is just a desert and, and, a, and a street. If I hit it into the street, I'm just dropping ball. I'm not counting it. Like, we, we keep on going. Yeah. And those yep. people get mad. And like, no, you're supposed to add two. But then when they get on the green, they like they'll they'll pick up their ball and like, oh, that's a gimme. Like, what do you mean that's a gimme? Yeah, put it in the hole, baby. Yeah, I mean, and all of I'm, I agree with that. I and mean, it's like it's like uh, you just nail a tee shot and just hook it straight left or slice it way out. I'm like, okay, we're not on the tour here, so hit another one. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like there's is there anybody behind us? No, so go hit another one. Who cares? It's always just awkward when you hit into someone else's fairway and you have to be like, give me a second, and then you got to hit your ball, Sorry. and then yep. you hit it more Sorry. in I'm their really fairway. I suck. <laughs> One time, so I was playing the like the pitch and putt course, the the par three uh, mm-hmm. in my town, and the first hole is a parking lot right off to the right. I sliced it so hard and hit this car that was driving towards us. And I was like 12, and this dude just gets out of the car and starts screaming like, motherfucker, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy's going to kill us. <laughs> and he walked right past me and, like, went to – because on the big course, he thought someone hit it over from, like, the big course hole and not me. And I was like, oh, my God. So you let someone like, get their ass kicked when it's supposed to be you. Hey, I was only 12. I wasn't thinking about <laughs> anyone else. I had, I had no empathy for anyone else. All right, I was still 12. pitch made. You need a you need a step up, Tyler. He yeah. said, "Jackers." Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing, you know, it's funny. I have a pile of books holding my phone up. And I just looked. It's a copy of the Legend of Bagger Vance. Who's Bagger Vance? You've never, you've never seen that golf movie with that guy. The only golf movie I've seen is uh, Happy Gilmore. That's it. Jeez, those are terrible. Anyway, Caddyshack, Cad, Caddyshack too. I've actually never seen Caddyshack. Uh, you're missing out. It's a great movie. Really? Okay. So what? What the the last thing I just want to touch on quickly because we've been we've been kind of asking everyone who's been coming on, and I know you only had the season in Great Lakes last year, but what what could fans do or people outside the game because. You know, not everyone knows how hard it is to be a minor league baseball player, and everyone just assumes, like, oh, these guys are rich millionaires, and they don't know 
you know, the realities and the struggle of minor league baseball when you're trying to make your way to the big league club. But what would you say as a fan or just someone outside of baseball, what could we do to help? Um, I mean, I, I definitely think like a food gift card here and there definitely would help. But I, I mean, for me, like, it, it's just a joy to go to the ballpark every day. And so like seeing like fans at the games, like just seeing smiling fans, like kids come up to you, like sign a ball or something like that. Um, like, and you make a kid's day like that, that to me, like is rewarding enough. Like, we can like we're all grind minor league grinders anyway, so we can scratch and claw mm. for anything. But it's just like having like the local towns fan support and just like being able to make some kids day or like you have kids day at the ballpark or when we do like special Olympics type day where where we mm. really get to like have um, an impact on the community. That's kind of like what's rewarding to me. So like as many of those kinds of days, like it might be an extra half an hour after the game to let all the kids run around the bases, but seeing the smiling faces on those kids, like makes it all worth it. That and that's what makes fans for life. I know like a lot of, I feel like baseball, social media always pushes for like, you know, for baseball to get more popular and in that aspect. I mean, you do stuff like that, that kid's going to remember that shit forever, you know, more than watching basketball or, or, or starting to get into football. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, that's I mean, a, that's an. I, I was just gonna say that, you know, I never really thought about like, because I'm sure in college, and I know a lot of college baseball doesn't get a big market and doesn't pull a lot of fans, and I know that some minor league teams don't either, but it's such a weird dichotomy because you have some of these minor league teams that are out in the middle of nowhere, but because of that that's all they have. So you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People. And that might yeah. all be gone. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers yeah, crossed that that doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, it, Ryan... is, it is cool. It is cool to see like a town, like come around a team. Like it, if like going to some of the smaller towns that didn't, don't have anything other than a minor league team, like and seeing place packed. And like you said, I mean, I went to a school and we didn't draw that much. It was friends and family that were mostly at the games. We didn't have, people from all over the place coming to watch us play. So, like, getting to go to a uh, packed stadium, that, I mean, that's pretty cool. So, uh, definitely one thing I'm looking forward to, hopefully, for next season. So, we're going to do some rapid fire, their hour version of rapid fire, because we, we like a little bit of an explanation. Um, but we'll we'll just kind of fire them off a little bit. First we one. call them slow questions. I don't know. Yeah. Do we have any we're, uh, we're, yeah, we're going to call them softball questions. Slow pitch okay. softball. We're going to lob you a, a softball here. All right. Um, favorite cereal? Frosted Flakes. Respectable. respectable. All right. Because, yes. you know. Not over we, the top, but gotten, respectable. Yeah. We, you wouldn't believe some of the uh, terrible, terrible answers we get. That <laughs> no one Give in their some. right Give mind. Me some. Someone uh, told us that we – well, I mean, one was kind of respectable. It was just kind of like – um, like, oh, I, I can't eat it now because I'm a professional athlete. And we're like, oh, well, fuck us. Um, but then was like, yeah, but we used to get it for Christmas. And I was like, wait, you got you got cereal for Christmas? That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of just a sad childhood. Have we? I, I believe we've gotten a Cheerios answer, which Di oh, that's I mean, terrible. like, how how boring and lame can you be? You know, I mean, yeah. if you're gonna say Cheerios, you gotta at least say Honey Nut Cheerios because regular Cheerios, man, at the least. The very least, or I don't even know if they make frosted Cheerios anymore. Yeah, frosted like if, if you put back in the day where if if Cheerios is your favorite cereal, you probably put ketchup on your tacos. So like that's that's not good. Which leads us to the next question: Do you put ketchup right. on your tacos? <laughs> no, no, perfect. Absolutely. We've never this, asked this question, a, but better better ketchup question: Do you do you dip your fries or do you uh, spray the ketchup on? Dip. Of course. Thank Man, you. You're, he's three for three, right? You might be the most normal person we've had. I mean, we don't want to count our chickens before they're hatched because we've got more questions. But um, <laughs> so this is always kind of a question that might not pan out well, and it just kind of shows how old Jesse and I are. But uh, are we going in sync or are we going Backstreet Boys? Backstreet Boys. Ryan hung sure. up on us. Yeah. <laughs> See, it was going too well. Back I had to, I, 
Sorry. Sorry. Just hate Jay Timby? You don't like the ramen hair? What what what's what's the problem I mean, with Jay Timby? Nothing. I just remember like my first C D player. My first C D was a Baxter oh, Boy wow. C D, so sorry. Yeah, that's uh, oh that's okay. I don't know if that's street cred or that's just sad. I don't know, but I either way it's probably, it's, it's I'm gonna a good go answer. Combo of both. Probably <laughs> probably more on the sad side. <laughs> Let me walk that back real quick. It could be worse. Uh, it could be Aaron Carter. So, yeah. Well, like I, I'm surprised we've never gotten someone being like, "Oh, I loved uh, 98 Degrees," or like <laughs> one of those third party. Let us know, Jess. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. O Town. <clears throat> I forgot about O Town. Yeah. They're 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 all terrible. Uh, <laughs> so, more more fun questions. If you, as of right now, if you got called up to the big leagues, if you could strike anyone out, who would it be? Uh, Mike Trout. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna strike anybody out, it's gotta be the best. So that is, and that is the right answer. There was only one answer, and that was the right one. Well, Uh, yeah, I would, I would, what I really hope for is like you know someone that's like, oh man, I asked. I asked, you know, let's say Albert Pujols when I was a kid, if he would sign my autograph, he said, no, you suck. So I want to strike him out really bad. That's that's what I'm hoping for All one right. day. I mean, someone someone probably has. There's somebody who has that story out there. Yeah, definitely. Man, what, that would have been me. Your, if, I, what, if I would have been pitching the major leagues, I would have wanted to strike Gary Sheffield out and Raul Mondesi because they passed right by me in an autograph line when I was like six, and I'll never forget it. <laughs> said fucking nerd. Um, and what, what was your, uh, what was your, uh, favorite high school jam? Favorite high school jam. Yeah. Hmm. Dang. I don't know. I was, I was a big Luke Bryan fan in high school. Okay. So, so. You said country. Yeah, I was, I was a country. I mean, I like country music. That's, that was, that would be my. I mean, I don't really have like one specific song to choose from, just more like country concerts and country fan. Okay. But if you, so if we're talking, if we're talking songs, if you're, if you're going to be coming out of the pen, what song are you coming out of the pen to? Oh, geez. Um, I don't know. I don't know because there's a, there's different ways you can go because you could go to something like something like scare somebody like you know I tell you you're you're a psycho or yeah, you could go with like okay. yeah you could go with something like funny just something to light the mood um, party in the USA okay. yeah exactly um, honestly I like that answer party in the USA okay. Miley Cyrus if I'm coming out so of I'm gonna it, take it. I'm gonna take it as disrespect if you don't. If you come out the pen and it's not to Miley Cyrus' part in the USA, <laughs> I'm gonna take it as disrespect. <laughs> but what song? What song are we talking? If the DH rule goes away in the National League and you're starting and you come up for that first at bat, what's your walk-up song? Um, I mean, the walk-up song I was gonna choose this year was probably gonna be like "People Back Home" by Florida Georgia Line. Uh, it's kind of chill. Uh, so I guess I would have to, since that was going to be the song, I'll probably choose that one. I have no idea what that song is, but <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. It's California boys, man, we're showing you no, no, no love <clears throat> to country over here. Apparently, that's our. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I don't have any oh. issues with it. I just I see. Just I'm just glad I just didn't get like get a fat X on that one or like nope. You're just you're canceled or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> you're done. So, well, now you're gonna see on next week we're gonna be interviewing someone being like, yeah, the guy last week. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All I kept yeah, this... talking about was country this and country that. Top, what's um, what's your uh, top f- favorite movie and favorite uh, album? Favorite movie, favorite album. Um, favorite movie, probably The Blind Side. Hmm. Uh, okay. It is a great movie. Classic. Classic. Sandra Bullock. Uh, oh gosh, man. Uh, and then favorite album. Dang, I don't know. Hmm. So we don't Put get mad at you. Should we say outside, outside, of, outside of country? I was gonna say. I was gonna try. I was trying to think of something outside of country. <laughs> Were you? I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to go uh, Little Wayne Carter four. Maybe, right, I think. That was Is like that high school time. that when he went mumble? Yeah. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yep. That's when he went mumble. That's when he Good changed stuff. the game. He changed <laughs> the game. You know, I was thinking. I was already thinking, don't say something country. I, I'd already given two country answers. So I had to go somewhere else. <laughs> so you had to And then he, he, asked me something he, was, from, he had to go something from high school. So I was like, all right, I'll go something from, from back, back then too. So I, I was thinking ahead on that one. <clears throat> he was already two <laughs> steps ahead of you, Jesse. He knew. Yeah. He was like, this guy is a bitch and I know what's coming. He knew. <laughs> he knew. I'm sick of this dude's shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, man, for, for coming on and, and sporting the Big League Chew shirt. We uh, we really wow. appreciate it. Um, you know, um, hope to have you on again. And, um, you know, we'll be – I'm not sure if you're going to be going to uh, to Rancho or if they're just going to bump you up to double A, you know, with with the missing season. But if not, we'll be uh, – We'll be hanging out at uh, at Rancho at least a couple times next year. So, awesome! Thank you guys so much for having me. It was a, it was a blast. Thanks, yeah, man. man. Thanks for coming on. We had a lot of fun. Anytime, anytime. I'm be happy to come back another time. We're gonna hold you to awesome. it. So that's kinda, fine. Hold me to it. <laughs> yeah, you're, All gonna right, be, you're gonna be looking looking from the dugout next year at Rancho, being like, see those like two weird guys that like. Like, what are, what are those stuff? two fat guys with their shirts off with BC <laughs> on them? What is, is you see what's going on out there? Yeah, that's gonna be us. And you're gonna have to pretend like you like you don't know us, and we'll we'll understand. But uh, we do appreciate you coming on, man, and we'll uh, we'll keep in contact. And yeah, we'll definitely be having you on and uh, hanging out real soon. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, guys. And now we go into our new segment, the fuck you of the week, um, or as our guy Farhan likes to say, fuck that guy. And you can quote me on that. Uh, which really breaks my heart. My guy, Kevin Pillar, they, they asked him about the, the postponing and, uh, of games, and he said, quote, It's a touchy subject. I don't think right now as a country we should be necessarily identifying individual groups of people that need to be uplifted. I think the vast majority of us would like to encourage to uplift everyone and support everyone, basically saying all lives matter, guys. And... If you don't have anything positive to say about the serious shit that's going on, then just don't say anything. You know, just if you want to stay out of it, stay out of it. You know, I think comments like that are, are, are stupid. I still love Kevin Pillar, but honestly, fuck that guy, and you can quote me on that. Yeah. If you don't understand that the all lives matter sentiment undermines the Black Lives Matter movement, then get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And fuck you, Kevin Pillar. And also... <laughs> Also, fuck you, Aubrey Huff. Because of you, I got banned from Twitter for like a day. Did you? Because I might, I yeah, I tweeted, I tweeted at him to get Corona and die. And oh, apparently, yeah. can't do that. They don't like it. <laughs> oh, no, oh, I can't do Dumb that. Bitch. He can pray. He can <laughs> praise this seventeen-year-old murderer, and everyone's yeah. all happy about it. And he doesn't get banned. Twitter, why are you gonna ban me? the fuck so fuck you of the week kevin pilar aubrey huff and and the resident fuck you of of the podcast fuck you aubrey huff um let's get into some positive shit um next week outlooks really excited about it giants have uh six games next week we're gonna finish finish up against the rockies which they always seem to struggle at colorado and they seem they're five zero right now so they're kicking the shit out of uh, the Rockies. I'm hoping it stays that way. I'm going to count this one as a win. So I would imagine we're going to get a loss there. But they're playing the D-backs who suck now. They just got gutted. Uh, Seattle sucks. So I'm hoping for five or four wins uh, out of out of six games next week. We're going to get that six or – I mean that eight or seven seed. Here we go. Burn it down, boys. Or saddle up. We're burning it down, boys. Let's go. Tyler. Dodgers got six games coming up this week. We got – a weird two-game homestand with Arizona starting tonight or yesterday night, excuse me, Tuesday mm-hmm. night. Um, then we got three versus Colorado at home and then a three-game series at Arizona to start off next week. Um, I'm going same thing that I've been saying this whole season. Just win the damn series. That's it. Yeah, you That's guys got to stand packed. We got to make a statement. Giants have to get above 500. I'm not. I'm not. I'd, like a playoff spot under 500 is just. 
doesn't do it for me. I mean, I'm going to be excited. I'm going to overlook it, obviously, if it happens, but I'm just – I'm not going to be stoked on it. Fuck the Giants. I can't believe I'm going to lose this Chipotle thing. That's right. Oh, you're going to lose it soon, baby. Oh, I'm going to probably lose it by next week. Yeah. But, so next know, week I better be... have Chipotle as we're, as we're talking. I'm going to be eating Chipotle. No, I think I'll wait till the end of the season so you can eat it. You're going to choose when you pay? Season. Yeah, I'm going to choose when I pay. So you can eat it on the last day of the season when you're sad because you guys finished fucking ninth in the National League. <laughs> then I'll give it to you. And I'm going to make a statement right here. Marlins aren't going to be in the playoffs, okay? It's not going to happen. They're not in. Phillies are going to pass them. They're going to get back to being a dumpster fire. I'm making a statement. There it is. Quote me on it. Um, yeah. As always, this episode has been brought to you by Renovation Candle Company, where you can save 20% off your entire order when you use the code BENCHES. Uh, go get yeah. yourself some fall candles, some, you know, some, some good stuff. There's 27 fall candles in the store right now. I personally smelled not one of them, but I can tell you the ones that I have smell delicious and you should buy them. It's going to be good for your health. You're going to enjoy, you're going to have a good time. So do yeah, it. Get chi- um, pull some chicks with it, some dudes, you know, whatever you're into, we got it. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. I'm saying fuck Aubrey Huff.